In the grand tapestry of life, kindness stands as a pillar of human virtue, a beacon that illuminates our shared journey through existence. It is through acts of kindness that we weave the threads of compassion and empathy, fostering a world that resonates with the harmony of shared humanity. The Stoics, with their profound wisdom, remind us of the pivotal role kindness plays in the cultivation of a virtuous life. Marcus Aurelius, a luminary in the realm of Stoicism, eloquently stated, kindness is mankind's greatest delight, underscoring the intrinsic value and joy derived from acts of benevolence. Yet, in the pursuit of kindness, we must tread with discernment, for when kindness is misplaced or misapplied, its effects can veer unexpectedly off course, potentially leading to outcomes that diverge from our noble intentions. Today, we embark on a reflective journey to explore seven ways how kindness will ruin your life, drawn from the insightful teachings of Marcus Aurelius. These seven types of kindness, although well-intentioned in nature, when not based on stoic wisdom, can become a double-edged sword because they unintentionally pave the way for consequences that diminish rather than enhance our happiness and that of others. Let's take today's journey and delve into the nuances of kindness, shedding light on why even our most altruistic intentions can, if not carefully considered, cause us to stray from the path of virtue. But before that, I have a challenge for you, which is to watch this video until the end and not miss any lessons on today's journey. If you're ready to embark on this meaningful journey, comment ready to signal your willingness to delve into the timeless teachings of Stoic philosophy. Number one, don't set yourself on fire. In our quest to live a life imbued with kindness and virtue, we often encounter the noble yet challenging maxim, don't set yourself on fire to keep others warm. This profound adage, resonating with the wisdom of Stoicism, serves as a beacon reminding us that true kindness and altruism should not come at the cost of our own well-being. Marcus Aurelius, a paragon of Stoic philosophy, underscored the importance of maintaining one's rationality and virtue as central to one's essence. He posited that neglecting oneself in the service of others disrupts the balance necessary for genuine kindness and virtue. Consider the metaphor of a candle. By giving light to others, it gradually diminishes itself until nothing remains. Similarly, when we extend ourselves beyond our limits, our internal resources dwindle, leaving us depleted and unable to serve anyone, least of all ourselves. Marcus Aurelius advises, be like the promontory against which the waves continually break, but it stands firm and tames the fury of the water around it. Isn't it then wiser to fortify our own well-being, to stand firm in our virtues, so we can be a source of strength and light to others without diminishing our own flame. Moreover, Aurelius teaches that the essence of kindness is not the depletion of one's resources, but the maintenance of an internal harmony that benefits all. He says, what is not good for the swarm is not good for the bee. This suggests that individual well-being is inseparable from the collective good. If we compromise our health, happiness or virtue in the name of helping others, we contravene the very principles of communal harmony and well-being that Stoicism espouses. Thus done, Stoicism does not advocate for a withdrawal from acts of kindness, but calls for a balanced approach where self-care and the care of others are not mutually exclusive but mutually reinforcing. 
This balanced kindness ensures our actions are not only sustainable, but also more impactful, rooted in a place of strength rather than depletion. Aurelius encourages us to cultivate an inner citadel, a reservoir of strength, virtue and resilience from which acts of genuine kindness can flow freely. In adopting this stoic approach to kindness, we learn that preserving our own flame is not selfishness, but a prerequisite for illuminating the lives of others. Let us, therefore, strive to maintain this balance, nurturing our well-being with the same zeal with which we seek to help others. By doing so, we not only safeguard our essence, but also enhance our capacity to contribute positively to the world around us. In reflecting on our daily practices of kindness, may we ask ourselves, are we nurturing our internal flame, ensuring it burns brightly enough to warm not just ourselves, but also those we seek to help? Number two, neglect yourself. In the tapestry of human interactions, kindness emerges as a thread of golden warmth, weaving connections that uplift and sustain both giver and receiver. Yet, in the fervor of extending this warmth to others, have you ever found yourself fraying at the edges, your own well-being unraveling in the wake of your generosity? This paradox where the act of kindness becomes a double-edged sword, slicing into the fabric of one's own tranquility invites us into a profound, stoic contemplation. Marcus Aurelius, a sage who navigated the complexities of leading with both authority and humanity, offers a guiding light. He reminds us to love only what happens, what is destined no greater harmony. But can there be harmony in self-neglect? Stoicism, with its pillars of virtue, teaches us the art of balanced living, where kindness is dispensed not from an empty cup, but from a wellspring of wisdom and self-respect. The philosophy does not advocate for a retreat into self-absorption, but warns against the erosion of one's essence in the pursuit of altruism. Marcus Aurelius, embodying Stoic wisdom, underscores the importance of self-care as the foundation upon which genuine kindness is built. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength, he asserts, suggesting that true strength lies in maintaining one's well-being while extending a hand to others. But how does one navigate the delicate dance between self-care and selfless care for others? The Stoics propose a path of reasoned compassion, where every act of kindness is measured against the yardstick of personal virtue and sustainability. It is a call to introspect. Are my acts of kindness enriching or depleting my reserves? Am I honoring my own boundaries as I endeavor to erase those of others? This stoic lesson does not diminish the value of kindness, but elevates it, infusing it with the wisdom of moderation and the courage to say no when generosity threatens to become self-sacrifice. It champions a model of kindness that is sustainable, one that acknowledges that depleting oneself serves neither the giver nor the recipient. Thus, as we walk the Stoic path, let us remember that the highest form of kindness is that which honors both the self and the other, intertwined in a dance of mutual respect and care. Let our acts of kindness be not only expressions of love for others, but also reflections of our commitment to our own well-being. In achieving this balance, we not only preserve our integrity and tranquility, but also amplify our capacity to serve 
and uplift those around us, embodying the stoic ideal of living a life in accordance with nature, our own and that of the greater whole. Through this lens, kindness becomes not a path to ruin, but a road to resilience, wisdom and true compassion. Number three, masks, real connections. Why do we sometimes cloak ourselves in kindness, obscuring the genuine connections that imbue life with profound meaning? Through the lens of Stoicism, we are encouraged to peel away this veneer and confront the authenticity that lies beneath. Stoicism implores us to consider whether our acts of kindness are genuine gestures of goodwill or merely shields against the vulnerability inherent in true connections. Epictetus, a venerated Stoic thinker, challenges us to reflect on whether our kindness serves as a barricade, preventing others from encountering our true selves. Imagine a tree, its bark etched with the marks of time, yet standing resiliently, offering shelter and reprieve. This tree does not conceal its scars. Instead, it stands as a testament to endurance and natural authenticity. In human relationships, hiding behind a constant facade of kindness can be akin to denying others the opportunity to engage with our genuine selves, to appreciate us in our entirety, with all our imperfections and strengths. The Stoics advocate for a kindness that is not a mere superficial display, but a profound expression of our authentic being. Genuine kindness involves being present, showing compassion and embracing our flaws and vulnerabilities. It is in the realm of authenticity that the most enduring and meaningful connections are forged, ones that can weather the vicissitudes of life. Thus, let us set aside the mask of feigned kindness. Let our genuine gestures build bridges to heartfelt relationships, where our true selves are not hidden but celebrated. In embracing our authenticity, we cultivate connections that mirror our true essence, discovering a beauty and strength that resonate with the core tenets of Stoicism. For it is in this authenticity and unmasked vulnerability that we find the deepest connections enriching our lives with true meaning and fulfillment. We are curious. Have you had any trouble giving kindness lately? Please share your stories and insights in the comments. Number four, being seen and treated as fragile. In the thoughtful teachings of Stoicism, as articulated by Marcus Aurelius, there lies a nuanced understanding of kindness and its potential pitfalls. One such nuanced view is captured in the concept of being seen and treated as fragile, which serves as a cautionary reflection on the nature of our benevolent actions. Stoicism, a philosophy that venerates resilience and the cultivation of personal virtue through adversity, invites us to reconsider the implications of our well-meaning, protective instincts. When we constantly shield others from challenges, acting from a place of overprotectiveness, we inadvertently cast a shadow on their capacity for growth and resilience. Such actions, though stemming from a place of kindness, might lead to individuals perceiving themselves or being perceived by others as fragile entities, ill-equipped to navigate the trials and tribulations of life. This is contrary to the Stoic principle, that it is through facing and surmounting challenges that one's character is forged and virtues are cultivated. Stoicism teaches us that true kindness is not merely about alleviating immediate discomfort or shielding others from all harm, rather, it's about empowering individuals to confront 
and overcome their obstacles, thereby fostering resilience and self-reliance. Overprotectiveness, while seemingly benign, can stifle the very virtues we aim to nurture in ourselves and others, such as courage, fortitude, and the ability to endure. Thus, as we endeavor to practice kindness, let us do so with the wisdom and discernment that Stoicism imparts. Let our actions not undermine the strength and resilience of those we wish to support, but rather encourage their growth and fortitude. In doing so, we honor the Stoic ethos of fostering virtue and resilience both in ourselves and in those around us. In this way, our kindness becomes a conduit for empowerment, not fragility, enabling individuals to rise to their challenges and discover their inner strength. Such is the path of Stoic kindness, a path that not only aids, but also uplifts, fostering a community of resilient individuals who are equipped to face life's vicissitudes with courage and poise. Number five, received requests have no limits. The notion that received requests have no limits serves as a vital stoic caution, guiding us to navigate the seas of generosity with the compass of discernment. In the absence of boundaries, our well-intentioned acts of kindness may transform into endless tides of demands, eroding the shores of our inner peace and diluting the essence of truer benevolence. Aurelius, steeped in the wisdom of Stoicism, advocates not for the renunciation of kindness, but for its wise application. He counsels us to temper our eagerness to please with the virtue of prudence, understanding that unbounded acquiescence to others' requests may not always serve the greater good. For in the relentless pursuit to fulfill every request, we risk not only our own well-being, but also the integrity of our kindness which ought to be a conscious choice rather than a reflexive concession. The Stoic approach to kindness is thus one of balance, a harmonious interplay between generosity and self-respect. It is a reminder that our own capacities are not infinite and that by recognizing and honoring our limitations, we do not diminish our kindness, but rather ensure its sustainability and authenticity. True kindness is mindful. It considers not only the needs of others, but also the stewardship of one's own resources, be they time, energy, or emotional strength. In embracing this stoic wisdom, let us cultivate the art of saying no when necessary, not out of selfishness, but out of a commitment to maintain our ability to say yes when it truly matters. Let our kindness be deliberate, rooted in the virtuous soil of wisdom and fortitude, so that it may flourish genuinely and endure. Thus, as we walk the stoic path, let us remember that in setting healthy boundaries, we do not forsake kindness, but elevate it, ensuring that our acts of goodwill are not only gifts to others, but also affirmations of our own virtue and well-being. In this balanced kindness, we find not ruin, but the profound fulfillment of a life lived with purpose, dignity, and genuine compassion. Number six, always trying to make everyone happy. The quest to achieve universal happiness a noble yet profoundly flawed endeavor encapsulates a pivotal misstep in human interaction, vividly exemplified through the narrative of Helena. This tale is a poignant embodiment of the stoic caution against the relentless pursuit of others' contentment at the sacrifice of one's own peace and moral integrity. Marcus Aurelius, a paragon of stoic wisdom, once asserted, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself. 
in your way of thinking. This insight challenges the very foundation of the belief that our happiness and worth are contingent upon the approval and satisfaction of those around us. Helena's journey, marked by a ceaseless endeavor to curate joy for others, mirrors the plight of many who navigate life's vast ocean with the compass of others' expectations and desires, often losing sight of their own virtues and aspirations. Her actions, though rooted in kindness, gradually morph into a labyrinth of obligation and self-neglect. It is a poignant reminder of the Stoic principle that emphasizes the importance of self-sufficiency and the understanding that attempting to control the emotions and responses of others is beyond our natural domain of control. The narrative further unravels the Stoic warning against the folly of conflating kindness with the compulsive need for external validation. Epictetus, another stalwart of Stoicism, eloquently stated, We are disturbed not by what happens to us, but by our thoughts about what happens. Helena's disquiet stemmed not from her acts of kindness, but from her underlying motive, a deep-seated craving for acknowledgement and acceptance, thus detaching her from the stoic ideal of living in harmony with one's inherent nature and values. In the reflection of Helena's story lies a profound stoic lesson. The pursuit of genuine kindness should be driven by an alignment with one's virtues and reason rather than an insatiable desire to be liked or to placate everyone. This wisdom does not denounce the act of kindness itself, but rather cautions against its transformation into a vessel for self-abandonment and the forsaking of stoic tranquility. Therefore, as we navigate the complexities of human relations and the desire to contribute positively to the lives of others, let us remember the distinction between authentic kindness and the pursuit of universal approval. The Stoic path teaches us to embrace kindness as a manifestation of virtue and reason, guiding us to a life where our actions are not chains of obligation, but expressions of our truest selves. In this authentic expression of kindness, liberated from the shadows of appeasement, we discover not only the essence of Stoic philosophy, but also the pathway to genuine contentment and self-realization. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Have you ever felt tired of always trying to make others happy? At those times, what did you do to free yourself? Please share your insights in the comments section. Number seven, reciprocity has an expiration date. In the profound depths of Stoic philosophy, Marcus Aurelius stands as a beacon of wisdom, urging us to anchor our actions in virtue rather than the fleeting sands of reciprocity. He teaches us that kindness, when offered as a bid for return, loses its essence, morphing into a mere transaction devoid of genuine virtue. The best way of avenging yourself is not to become like the wrongdoer, Aurelius advises, guiding us to transcend the petty scales of tit-for-tat. This wisdom illuminates the path to a life where our actions are gifts, not loans, expecting repayment. The concept of reciprocity bearing an expiration date unveils a profound stoic truth, that our peace, our virtue, our very essence must stand independent of the whims and wills of others. To tether our sense of well-being to the expectation of kindness returned is to build our house upon a foundation of sand, vulnerable to every tide of human fickleness. What, then, becomes of relationships if they are stripped of this transactional nature? They bloom into genuine expressions of human connection, 
where kindness flows freely, not as an investment seeking dividends, but as an effortless outpouring of our highest selves. Imagine a world where each act of kindness is an end in itself, not a means to an end. How liberating it is to extend a hand, not with the silent hope of reciprocity, but with the serene knowledge that in doing so, we are true to our own nature, to the Stoic virtue that Marcus Aurelius so eloquently espoused. This is not to say that we turn a blind eye to the kindness of others, but to recognize that the value of our actions lies not in their acknowledgement or repayment, but in their alignment with our principles. By embracing kindness as a practice intrinsic to our character, we embark on a journey of profound self-cultivation. This stoic approach to kindness challenges us to examine our motivations, to strip away the layers of expectation, and to act from a place of pure intention. Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one, Aurelius prompts us. In embodying this ethos, we not only free ourselves from the disappointment of unreciprocated kindness, but also from the bitterness that can taint our hearts when our expectations are not met. Let us, then, offer our kindness generously, with hearts unburdened by the desire for reward. In doing so, we not only uphold the stoic virtues espoused by Marcus Aurelius, but also contribute to a world where kindness is unconditional, where relationships are built on the solid ground of genuine virtue, and where our inner peace remains undisturbed by the actions of others. This, in essence, is the path to a fulfilling life, grounded in the stoic commitment to act rightly because it is right, not for what it might bring us in return. As we conclude our exploration of the seven ways how kindness will ruin your life, as highlighted by Marcus Aurelius, let us remember the essence of stoic wisdom. Kindness, when practiced with discernment, enhances not just the lives of others, but our own as well. Stoicism teaches us that true kindness is guided by virtue, wisdom, and a deep understanding of our interconnectedness. It is not about losing ourselves in the service of others, but about fostering a harmony that uplifts all involved. Let us then approach kindness with a stoic balance, ensuring it springs from a place of strength and self-awareness, contributing to a life marked by virtue, happiness and profound peace. In this way, our kindness becomes a beacon of stoic virtue, illuminating the path for ourselves and for those we touch with our actions. Your views are very valuable to us. Which stoic lesson impressed you the most in this video? Please comment what you learn. If you feel these messages are valuable, please show your support by clicking like, leaving a comment with your feedback or questions about stoicism or about your own life. Don't forget to share this video with your friends who also seek inner peace and strength. Finally, if you are not yet a member of our community, click subscribe and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any valuable videos we will share in the future.